Hello, my name is Shirley Self and I'm here to talk astrology. Today I thought I would kind of summarize the uh, journey of the soul that I have been going over in more depth in the last 28 videos. And um, so let's look at this, um, this cycle. Um, and this is true of the cycle, and it is true of the zodiac. This is the uh, solar hemisphere. This is the lunar hemisphere. Over here uh, in the solar hemisphere, the sun has got two uh, goals. Um, at service and survival. And uh, understand, the uh, moon has uh, a goal. Uh, one, one of its goals is uh, kicking the ass of the sun and keeping it moving because the sun, um, it's satisfied. As long as it's fed, it's happy. Until it has developed that spiritual understanding of oh, this, the glorious um, the happiness and the joy that comes to you from being of service to your fellow man, um, the sun just wants to survive. And as long as he's fed and um, has his beer, He's happy. He's a typical redneck. I'm serious. It's the moon. The moon brings to the sun dissatisfaction and um, hope for the future. You know, something, an urge, a desire to do something in the future. And that's the only thing that keeps the, uh, the uh, sun moving. And the moon is also, she's not only um, the um, sun's goad, she is uh, the reservoir of everything uh, that has happened in uh, many cycles as this soul has gone around. This moon contains all of that information. Um, the sun, all the sun knows is what it's experienced this lifetime. That's virtually all it knows. And, and uh, unless it accesses uh, the moon, it, it knows uh, virtually nothing beyond that. All that uh, extra information is available to uh, the sun through the subconscious mind, the solar mind through the subconscious mind. So over here, we're de democratic. Um, the uh, sun is one of us. We. Very much. We. Over here, the moon has been worked, working to bring uh, the entity soul out of uh, the masses to... Um, an aristocratic, uh, separating that person to make it unique. And so we're over here, we're democratic and aristocratic. Um, these, um, the, the uh, sun is about first-hand experience. And it's the moon's job to keep uh, the sun busy doing first-hand experience. Um, and the moon's job... Um, here is to develop the sun into a unique individual. And um, so over here we're talking intellectual growth. Um, so, okay, this is night. You look at your horoscope, and if you were born at night, um, you'll be down in here. This is uh, sundown. This is dawn. If you're born during the day, you'll be up in here. And... Um, one of the things I have in, in uh, against uh, induced births is they tend to cluster those induced births over here. And if the sun is over here, it's much more self-contained and self-regulated. Uh, over here, it's much more, has to fight for its freedom a lot harder. It has to deal with... Uh, um, it learns about itself more as a reflection of what other people give it than of how it how it feels to be over here. So that's what I have against induced births. That's just me. Um, so down here we've got pantheists. These people are in love with nature, in love with their own nature, They're creating themselves of, out of something uh, that was potential over here. Creating it to virtually an ideal over here. And up here, God is one. Um, so this is uh, development and knowledge. And this is application of uh, that knowledge. 
the quarters. It's divided into four. This is uh, the cross of being. It's a, a circle with a cross in it is the symbol of uh, earth. It's also the symbol of Fortuna, which kind of explains what Fortuna is in your uh, horoscope. It is a place where you very, very happily touch earth. Hopefully happily, if it's not terribly afflicted, etc. And it matters if you're figuring out your Fortuna, whether you were born during the day or during the night. The formula is different. Um, so here in the earth quarter, uh, the uh, sun is uh, relying on instincts. Those instincts are its guidance. Instincts. And all of this is available as its instincts. Uh, and so um, this, um, phase one, is a physical manifestation of spiritual perfection. And all it has got to do is to maintain that while building up the desire to step off of its uh, throne of perfection and uh, dive into the world and do something, dive into the unknown. This is always a, uh, a test for the, the, the hero here. This is the journey of the hero to, uh, to give up his satisfaction once he's attained it and to dive off into the unknown to do something else. Excuse me. Okay, so after phase one, every achievement of the soul springs out of the body. Out of the body. Phase two, the energy begins. The energy of the demogorgon is dumped into phase two, and, um, and they have to be very, very active people in order to uh, contain the energy and not let it explode and splatter everything and everybody. Um, so we've come to 18 degrees. Now, 18 degrees is 1 20th of the cycle. And that uh, right there is a development, 1 20th, of development of talent and uh, intellectual quality. Uh, come to phase three, we've got uh, growth and loss. The growth of the sun and uh, the loss of the moon, which, you know, as, lost the, as the sun heads off into the world, the uh, uh, moon and Venus loses the comfort of the maternal matrix and now has to play catch up. And it's hard. These people uh, tend to be really cranky and sad because um, they're heading off. Um, it's almost like the hobbit heading off without even his pocket handkerchief. Anyway, uh, that's phase three. Their phase of ambition, that is actually the name that Yeats gave it. Their instincts is, instinct here is guidance, absolute guidance. If they'll pay attention to their instincts, their bodies will stay healthy. It's, it's called it body sanity. Um, phase four, we've come to the semi-square. That's one-eighth, and... Um, that's dividing, um, uh, you get 45, we're at the 45 degrees. This is the release point of, uh, in Taurus. The fixed signs, at 15 of the fixed signs, are release points of energy. And this is our first one. And, um, and it's a very, very important phase. Uh, the, uh, it's, um, release of meaning and of individual expression. Uh, struggle is starting here against his own nature. Now, his nature says to be, to be sweet, like Mom taught me to be. That'll, that'll get me through life. But four has got to sweetly speak up and to uh, tell the truth. He's got to actually criticize the world. And that's an uncomfortable position. And it'll uh, stop four in its tracks until um, its daemon will kick him down the road. Trust me. Uh, but th that desire, uh, the desire to express themselves, to go out in the world and conquer it, has got to um, struggle against that desire to 
do it the way mom taught me to do it. And, 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 and I'm really afraid that the boys won't like me if I tell them that their heads are... Anyway, that's phase four. And um, the struggle begins. Over here at phase five, a true reflection begins. There's true self-analysis starting at phase five. And uh, we've got the septile right here. Notice there's the septile. And that septile is division by seven, and that is fated. It is, uh, seven is a, uh, an aspect of destiny. So um, it's also, it also incorporates the waxing uh, sextile, which is instinctive develop, development and spontaneous growth. So we've come to uh, phase six, which is uh, the quintile, one-fifth. And uh, one-fifth one -fifth is an uh, a aspect of talent, uh, natural ability. And these people, because of the work done at the uh, this at this uh, phase of power here, are um, have an incredible ease of mo movement, and that is true of all of these of this uh, rect rect rectangle of uh, self definition. And um, all these people need to contain themselves is a rule book. And they need to get it at the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts or something. All that's because um, they need to, to uh, have a certain nothing. Nothing stops. Nothing stands in their way. Nothing stands in their way. They have to have uh, developed some kind of uh, Libra. Is there some kind of rule book to help them function? Because they can really uh, run amok. We may come to uh, phase seven, and that's the master of earth, the master of the practical world. These people have very complex instincts and, um, and uh, very uh, uncomplicated minds. Uh, since five, the focus has been on one's capacity to have a personal effect on the world. And that, uh, that will last until phase 12, uh, which has, turns inward uh, to have a personal effect on himself. So um, we come to uh, the water quarter. And I'll quote from Einstein here. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Or as uh, Yeats said, if you have a little bit of knowledge and you uh, uh, access your imagination, that knowledge can be magnified tremendously. Because all you have to have is a little bit of understanding in your mind to hook the information to. And the imagination can help you run, just like Einstein's and Melvis. So we're into the water quarter and we've uh, into should. And this is where the moon starts on the sun and says, you should do this, dear, and you should do that. And this is where the sun starts feeling insecure because uh, the sun is not happy in water. The moon is happy in water, and the moon has uh, become the guidance of the sun. So um, we've come into self-creation. Um, we're guided here by intuition. Intuition, over here are the senses. Intuition is the sum of the senses. Uh, and uh, intuition will guide them to the perfection of uh, their creative powers. So we're in phase eight. Remember these, um, these at the beginnings of these phases at the beginnings of the quarters are phases of crisis. Now, while phases 1 and 15 were phases of peace, because they ah, whew, did that, these people are phases of war. Um, the, uh, um, the 90 degree crisis 
the need to take action. That's what 90 degrees is. If you get a square, it's you have to act. You get a trine, it'll look a little by itself. Get a square, you have to act. And um, phase eight will hang on and go to war. It's an internal war, but it happens on the outside because inside it would never re get resolved. Phase 8 and phase 22 have to be de defeated by the world. And it can be an ugly, ugly picture before they finally uh, leap off into, and in phase 9 is where the uh, uh, water level of the Demogorgon is dumped into uh, the uh, life. And um, these people are... Uh, um, in incredibly imaginative and passionate. Um, I mean, seriously passionate. And they have managed to get here because they've developed a belief in this in themselves. And that's, so they, that's what Yeats named that phase, phase nine. Um, they're here at two sevenths, two sevenths, the biceptile. So we've, we've got a destiny here. And uh, how they how they uh, con learn to control that energy is by focusing that energy onto uh, a passion that is brought to them from here. Some beautiful talent that the the body loves to do, something that they love to do. They focus that, and they will tame that uh, imaginative, creative energy because it can drive them nuts. Um, uh, they also got three tenths is in here. It's the uh, that's three hundred and eight degrees. It's the tri decile, or if you're French, the tri de Chile. Uh, it's uh, intuitive and it's an expression of talent, and that's what uh, nine needs to do. Is if you've got that talent, express it, use it, focus on it. It'll uh, tame that wild, crazy energy. Phase 10 is a breaking free of uh, family and cultural definitions. It's 120 degrees is in here. And um, that's a harmonizing. That's a blending of energies. This is a, a phase of perseverance and growth. Phase 11, that's where uh, the um, lunar mind, or should I say Persephone, was, that's uh, where the lunar mind awakens to its the light in the body that's where uh, virtually your Jupiter wakes up and you it, you access it in the body the solar mind has is focused out and the lunar mind is sitting in there full of light and the uh, solar mind has got to notice that because it isn't finding what it wants out here it's got to notice that and uh, turn inward and seek its guidance um, so <laughs> Yates called it the annihilator of despair. Um, so it's also, uh, the, uh, 15 degrees contains the 15 degrees of Leo, which is a conscious desire to uh, express yourself and, uh, to take action, a need to take action. Phase 12. You've got uh, uh, the midnight sun. Persephone is the midnight sun. And uh, the solar mind here turns inward, is no longer focused on its effect on the outer world, but is focused on its uh, the glories of its inner world. It's um, the biquintile, which uh, is a, a two-fifths. And it's a um, aspect of a creative transformation. Um, it's a hundred, also 150 degrees, which is five twelfths, and very, very uncomfortable. That happens right there. Very, very uncomfortable. It's a, um, it's a crisis. It's uh, a crisis of work or health. And it uh, it brings consciousness into focus. It's uh, uh, 
the um, inconjunct is 150 degrees and that it connects um, signs that are totally uh, at odds with each other, that are do not understand each other at at, at all. And it's so what it does is it demands that you uh, address that before you can for Aries Virgo is a demand to uh, bring, bring yourself um, heal yourself. Here's what needs fixed. Anything you've got on the sixth house is uh, uh, what you have, have to uh, fix. It's uh, the key to your illness. It's also the key to your health. But it's what you have to fix before you can come into balance, before you can um, be honest in relationships, be yourself. So that's uh, uh, phase 12 is a, a very important one, and so is phase 13, because phase 13 has got to uh, bring that energy out into the world. That energy that was discovered, that light, that uh, all that new stuff that is available, at, uh, because the uh, sun is now uh, conjoined to the light, the midnight sun, Persephone, the light in the body, Jupiter. Um, so this is a, 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 a phase of self knowledge, of subjective truth, and it's a phase of isolation, and they have to isolate the emotions here so that they can be self-contained. Um, it's a, um, a triceptile, and that's a co cooperation with cosmic forces. And those cosmic forces are the forces they found inside themselves. It's um, um, 165 degrees, which Noel Till calls the Quindicile. For some reason, I have not figured it out yet. Um, it's 165 degrees. It's 50 degrees before. Um, it, it's um, what do you say? That full moon there. It's 15 degrees before the uh, full moon, or 15 degrees after the full moon, and it's um, a uh, a sign of determination. It's an aspect of dogged determination of of. Uh, these people are climbing the mountain, and they're not to be deterred. They don't look down. They're focused. They're focused. Um, and these two right here are focused on their strengths. Their strengths. As uh, 12 virtually was murdered, killed, eliminated by his weaknesses. These uh, two here are focus focusing, bringing to light and bringing into perfection their strengths. Um, this is a, as you would guess, with a uh, Virgo here, this is uh, self-development, Taurus, uh, by means of self-judgment, Virgo. Master of water. The image-making powers are its height right there. Now we've come to the air quarter which is a creation of a unique in intellect. Uh, the unique intellect is the only permanent human creation. It is the uh, form of the, the Holy Grail, the Philosopher's Stone. We've gone from the darkness of self-creation into the light of participation. This is a coming into air out of the water. Before uh, 15 here, style is created. After 15, style is inherent. Before 15, love of nature. After 15, love of man. At 15, the personality is strongest here. A personality, Yeats says, is uh, different from character. Character is permanent. Personality is assumed. These people are isolated. It's called an isolation of completion. Um, phase 15 has 
pull the sword from the stone. So we get to phase 15, phase 16 here. And uh, phase 15 is a phase of peace. All they have to do is build up the desire to do something with their perfect tool that they have created. Phase 16 is um, they've got to tame that wild uh, air energy. Uh, they, li they live in the imagination. They are uh, full of ideas. And they have to work on those ideas and make pick a couple and make them real uh, to focus their energies because otherwise they'll just go mad. Their um, their um, they, their imagination is wild. It uh, wanders all over the place. It changes its mind, and they they need to focus it. They need to focus it. That's this uh, rectangle right here is one of uh, focus to achieve one's potentials. So um, oh, and six, 16, 17, 18, these people have a a, a, a strong feeling that uh, that they're right in their ambitions that they're they're uh, they have a right to them that they are they've worked this hard to develop those ambitions and they have a right to pursue them um, because 15 has pulled the sword from the stone the sword the intellect from the stone uh, the it buried in the dirt, buried in a rock right here. The sword from the stone. So they can use it. That's what these people are about. There's people are into sword play. Absolutely. Um, we've got the Queen de Chile here. It's uh, the 95 degrees, the uh, waning Queen de Chile. That's a determination. Um, the goal at phase 16 is to become prag a pragmat pragmatist. A pragmatist while remaining a lover. Not an easy feat. Um, phase 17 uh, is the, it contains the uh, waning uh, in conjunct, 150 degrees crisis. It's a crisis of personal power. It's in the Scorp It's into uh, Scorpio, and um, and Scorpio is about personal power. Scorpio, um, Scorpio is the the second uh, chakra up. It is where your personal power resides. It's often confused with sexual power, and when that power, personal power is uh, abused, in in life, it often comes out in uh, as sexual abuse, uh, sec mus misuse of sexual power. Why? Because it's all down there, same thing. The creative power is sexual power. Sexual power is creative power. It's all the time, same thing. So, um, they are, uh, these people are stretching and they're expanding their creativity. These people are on the move. Always on the move, learning, learning, a continual deepening of uh, understanding and a heightening of perspective. Um, they are motivated by loss. Notice that they're up here in uh, Scorpio, Scorpio, which is ruled by Mars and Pluto, which is none of them terribly friendly, um, but creative. Their creativity is motivated by loss. You move to phase um, 18. We've come to the semi-square, the 15 of the Scorpio release point. The, um, uh, and that is a release of one's own particular power. Um, phase 18 is about picking a specialty. We're into the king phases here. And uh, the king rules a territory. And phase 18 is choosing that territory that phase 19 will conquer. Um, a, a problem with phase 18, as with, with its mask over here at phase 4, 
is that the moon is still uh, moon was still attached to the maternal matrix over here, wanting uh, desperate. <laughs> Nobody's telling me what to do anymore. Over here, it's still hooked on the ideal. Why don't I get the picket fence? Why can't I live in a beautiful little house? Why do I have to live in this apartment in New York just because you want to... Whatever. You know, that's a, a problem with Phase 18 is that the uh, solar mind has got to pick a specialty, has got to pick something that is exceedingly interested in and pursue it. And the lunar mind is saying, but, 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 no, no, that isn't what I wanted at all. And in 18 is hard. Um, so we come to 19, not so hard. 19 is joyous. It has given up that no, no, no. And if it hasn't, it will. It uh, breaks free of that um, uh, ideal situation and it deals with reality. It's one of those power rectangle. It's the assertive self. Uh, no, that's not me. I'm Shirley. It's the mount. It's the mounted king. He's conquering territory. It's uh, the five eighths is here. The what is it? Two hundred and twenty five degrees. That's the waning sesquiquadrate. It's uh, it's an urge to action in the social sphere. Is that appropriate or what? These people want to conquer the world. Phase twenty. It's the triumph of power. The triumph of power. The seated king. They administer a territory. They lay down the rules. They expand the boundaries. In phase 21, master of air. The triumph of achievement. Now, the intellect is the only lasting human creation. And there it is at Moon Phase 21. They're nice people. They tend to be good people. But like I say, the only um, sin they really indulge in is sexual. Um, they're specialists. They have Their genius is their perception. As, um, and they follow the rule of Socrates, who said... The shortest way to live with honor in the world is to be in reality what we appear to be. And Moon Phase 21 is. So we come to the fire quarter. The fire quarter. The Merlins. There, here is where the, um, the grail is filled. Here is where the sun is spiritualized. Uh, fate is powerful over here. They are the result of, the, of, of this. They are the result. So, um, while Yates said the, the will is most important here, the mask is most important here, the creative genius is most important here, but here they deal with their fate. So... Um, we come into uh, demonstration and evaluation. 23, 24, and 25 are the evaluation of strength. 26, uh, 27, and 28 are the evaluation of weakness. Um, phase 22 up here, the temptation of strength as 20, or as 8 down here was the temptation of weakness. This is the crossing from intellectual understanding to a spiritual perspective. There's a growing desire for reconnection. These people are as isolated as you can get. They're in their heads. That's why this is so important to these people. Because if you don't bring them back to Earth, you know, if they never get any decent sex or garden or something, if they don't connect to Earth, they float off like balloons, and they're a danger because there are, there are politicians. They're the people who tell us what to think. They're the people that bring us new ideas. They're important. 
So they need to stay grounded. So um, the new girl is um, it, up here is Merlin. It's the power to control and direct the animal instincts. So come to phase 22, which is a phase of war, and um, he has to be convinced that there's something further because he's at the top of his game right here. And he has to just become totally defeated by the world before he will uh, uh, come off his high horse and be of service to the world, which is what they do. These people over here fix what these people over here screw up. The politicians, the Berlins, the Berlins bring down the king. Bring down the king. We have Gandhi over here. We have George Washington over there. So, face 23. So, what do they have left? You know, the, the mind is no longer the uh, top dog here. These people, however, have the structure of the mind, which is technique. These people are technical geniuses. They're, uh, they place a high value on skill. They have a great deal of abil ability but they lack critical judgment. There's uh, These people here have to pity the world. It's the best they can do. Pity. That's, uh, that's awareness, but it's not emotional. Empathy. Now that's an understanding so intimate that the feelings of others are comprehended. Compassion, that's feeling with. So it's a growth of this, um, uh, it's a growth of compassion. It's a growth of understanding. It's a growth of wisdom. Up here we have pity. It is the pity that will uh, bring the technician to the aid of uh, the world. My uh, dentist is a moon phase 23, and I love him. He is technically a genius, and he is, I'm honored that he works on me. You know what I mean? He's a king. He's a king. <laughs> so, okay, so we come to 24, and here we come to the uh, technician with standards, and that's what he does, is he raises the standards of the world around him. He's going after excellence. He's going after excellence. Aquarius, Aquarius. Um, he's a craftsman. That's the name of Moon Phase 24. Their uh, people are up here are very impersonal. They're, uh, they're um, emotionally isolated. Um, they're at the waning sextile. And that is the productive use of new forms. New forms of consciousness up here. New forms of consciousness. Um, 25, that's the revolutionary. Here we had George Washington and, and uh, Gandhi and Jim Jones. Um, it's somebody who takes up a cause. We've got the waning septile, 312 degrees. That's a, a change toward greater freedoms, and that's what these people are fighting for. Think about uh, understand George Washington wasn't exactly fighting for the three freedom of the peons. He was fighting for the freedom of the, the haves, not the have-nots. But And we're now we're coming to the fighting of the have, for the have-nots. It was inevitable. And here we are. Um, so we have uh, 15 degrees of uh, Aquarius right there, the release point, uh, the creative release of the self. Um, now uh, they're uh, uh, of the power rectangle, and so they have to avoid their abuse of uh, their energies, and um, that includes their sexual energies. Uh, we've come to the hunchback, moon phase 26, moon phase 26. Um, this is, as Moon Phase 25 was the expression of their power, Moon Phase 26 will be a physical expression of their weakness. 
And um, so uh, that weakness, there, there are two sources of this weakness. One will be punishment for um, uh, abuse of power in main, Moon Phase 25. And, um, a weak, that, that, and they will be weakened by their failure a moon phase 18 to uh, remember their they don't want to they don't want to get it go against their ideals well you know I wouldn't say that no I wouldn't well it's you know if it's important to say it you should say it moon phase 18 uh, um, Thomas Jefferson not fighting for uh, the eventual emancipation of the slave um, uh, Abraham Lincoln having to take on that burden. So Moon Phase 26 is um, uh, all these people have the power of per persuasion, but what Moon Phase 26 has on top of that is clarity, a clarity of vision that is absolutely um, frightening, frightening, because they can see not only you, they can see themselves. So we come to the saint, and uh, this is a a, a moon phase of simplification. They're martyrs. They're uh, teachers. The um, um, if they're not hiding out like uh, Bob Dylan does, but he's a teacher and he's a martyr. Um, so we come to the fool. Uh, now these two, these three only uh, they incarnate in order to to. Um, uh, because they have to experience the world uh, in a way that they have refused to experience the world before, so they incarnate. Uh, Moon Phase 28 incarnates to experience joy of the body. There are um, some parts of the physical have been left out of their spiritual understanding, and uh, so they in incarnate to experience that. They are in, but not of, the world. So that's kind of a review. We've come here to the um, um, Philosopher's Stone. Um, it's Easter this coming weekend. It uh, feels appropriate to me that it's April Fool's Day. I just wanted to share with you um, a little thing I learned about um, Christ. So here we have in Moon Phase 12 is the sacrifice of the hero. Here's where here's where that crucifixion happens. The um, crucifixion happens after the six, sex initiation. Boom. The crucifixion happens one, two, three days before the resurrection. The resurrection is at the full moon. But the church moved that to the full moon after, um, or the first Sunday after the full moon, in the in um, spring. I put it up here. That's not Libra. That's Capricorn. That meant that there, you know, what Capricorn is. The Capricorn's your hierarchy. Uh, the king. We've got the king up here. So there, immediately, you can have a priesthood. And instead of, instead of owning your mask, which is Christ, you crawl. You beg your way up through the priesthood for uh, for what is your own birthright. That mask over there is your birthright. Christ is your birthright. You don't need priesthood saying, dif dispensing, dispensing Christ to you. It's yours. It's yours. Anyway, until I see you again, I hope you feel blessed. Bye-bye.